So I, as I mentioned uh, at the beginning of our service, uh, tonight we're beginning a three-week mini-series about different gifts that God has given to us, the church, God's people, as uh, different ways to experience God in the context of worship uh, and as the community, the body of Christ. We're g- so the three things that we are going to look at is communion, the church, and baptism. And each of these things, especially if we've been in church for a long time, are something that we, we do so regularly. But especially for something like communion, in this particular congregation at Trinity, how often do we celebrate communion? Every week. And in some cases, if you attend this service and services on Sunday, you get it twice a week. And when things happen on a regular basis, they almost become routine or rote. We do it so much, and just it's a part of our rhythm, which is so holy and wonderful. And often we lose sight of the depth of its meaning. So every once in a while, I, for my own self, like to sit and remind myself, what, did it, what is it that it that communion truly is. What does it mean for me as someone who claims Jesus as my Lord and Savior? What does this moment invite me to? What is it that we as Methodists believe about communion? And this service in particular is a unique service because many of us in this room maybe haven't heard what Methodists think about communion in a really long time, or maybe you're relatively new to the Methodist tradition and the Wesleyan way. And so to take just a few moments to remind all of us about what it is that Christ invites us to when the pastor gets behind that big table and says, Christ our Lord invites to his table all who love him. What does that actually mean? And how are we invited to live into that? So to answer some of the questions, uh, these questions this evening, we're going to turn to uh, the Paul's first letter to the Corinthians. Uh, and before I do, I wanted to mention that in the United Methodist Church, we celebrate two sacraments, um, meaning that a sacrament indicates something that is absolutely crucial to sustaining a community of faith, to sustaining our own lives. We need sacraments to remind us of who we are, whose we are, and what we have been called to in this world as we live and move and have our being alongside Christ. So in the United Methodist Church, we celebrate Holy Communion and baptism as two aspects of our life together as a community of faith that are important for us in our own walks of of faith and as we do so in a community or a body of Christ. So having understood that, I invite us all to jump back in time to when Paul was writing this letter to the Corinthians, this very first letter. I'm going to take a few moments to read through this, and once again, I invite you to think about the words that are written here, and where is it that the Holy Spirit pulls you to? Hear these words from the Apostle Paul. For I received from the Lord what I also handed on to you, that the Lord Jesus, on the night when he was betrayed, took a loaf of bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, This is my body for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, he took the cup also after supper, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Whoever, therefore, eats the bread and drinks the cup of the Lord in an unworthy manner will be answerable for the body and blood of the Lord. 
Examine yourselves, and only then eat of the bread and drink of the cup. For all who eat and drink without discerning the body eat and drink judgment against themselves. This is the word of God given to us as the children of God, and we say, thanks be to God. Will you pray with me? Holy God, as always, we give you thanks for your word, the scriptures that you have given to us passed down from generation to generation as a way to know you more fully. May the Holy Spirit be with us as we open our hearts and our minds and we remember who we are and who you have called us to be in Christ. Amen. All right, so I have two questions for you tonight. The first is one you're familiar with. What uh, aspect of the scripture pulled your attention? What word or phrase did the Holy Spirit pull you to this evening? In remembrance, good. And he gave thanks. Yes, he did. Examine yourselves, good. Be blessed. Any others? So when the Apostle Paul wrote to this letter to the Corinthians, oh, did you have one? Uh, this, is my body. this is my body. Yes, a broken body at that. Uh, so when the Apostle Paul wrote this letter to the Corinthians, uh, he had heard that there were some squabbles in this community of faith, a faith that he had fostered and helped it to grow. And one of those squabbles was about what was appropriate to eat. This community was uh, a new faith community that was navigating what it looked like to be in community with two very different people. People who grew up with their families who were, who were Jewish, who grew up with kosher laws and had very strict diets on what was acceptable to eat and what was not. And they were in community and relationship with people who were born as Gentiles, who did not have kosher laws, who did not have strict restrictions on what they could and could not eat. And so in this argument, they were trying to discern what could they do together? What was appropriate? Are they real Christians if they eat all this? Are we, aren't we not supposed to be beholden to the law anymore? So this back and forth was happening, and Paul is writing this letter with a lot of um, advice on what to do in relationship to how to think about the way that God was leaning them into in this particular moment, in this context. And one of the things he points to after giving that advice was the Lord's Supper as one meal that can be shared by all. A meal that was instituted not by law, but by Jesus himself. A meal that points to Christ's body and Christ's blood as a way to bring people together in one place, a holy table, a holy meal, if you were. So, before we dive into what Methodists think, I think the overarching theme for this moment of communion is a deep reminder that we are united. No matter who we are, no matter our experiences, each and every one of us are invited to the holy communion table, to partake of one holy meal together, regardless of what side we fall on any, any argument. This is one table in the middle together. Here's your next question. Think about a time when you were either receiving communion or offering communion to someone when that experience made a significant impact on you. And how would you describe that moment 
in one or two words. I'll give you a few moments to think about that. How would you describe that moment? Mm-hmm. Yep, when you have offered or when you have received. Mm-hmm. Yep. It's a sacred moment. That's perfect. A sacred moment. It's humbling. Absolutely. Any others? Okay. I'm sorry, that was your experience, and I'm glad that we are able to offer a new experience for you. So in thinking about what Holy Communion is and where it comes from and what it might mean for us, what does it mean when we step in front and receive a piece of bread and take a cup and partake? So tonight, I want to use actually the framework of our own communion liturgy. There's a moment uh, after we have lifted the bread, broken the bread, and said the same words that Paul wrote here. There's a moment after I've lifted the bread, broken it, and then lifted the cup where I invite us all to pray. And I say special words that are actually called an application. Epiclesis, which is a fancy way of saying invoking the Holy Spirit, where we actually invite the Holy Spirit into the midst. And so you might hear, recognize me say, pour out your Holy Spirit on us gathered here and on these gifts of bread and cup. Make them be for us the body and blood of Christ that we might be for the world, the body of Christ, redeemed by his blood. Make us one with Christ, with each other, and in unity with all the world, in ministry to all the world, until Christ comes again. Do those words sound familiar? So in that epiclesis, it actually gives us the breadth of theological depth of what it means for us as Wesleyan Christians to come to an experience at the Holy Communion table. The first uh, thing that we believe about Holy Communion is that Christ's presence is really with us in this moment. We pray in that epiclesis that the Holy Spirit would come and make the bread and the cup be for us, Christ's body and blood. We believe that when those words are spoken, that the risen Christ is present in the broken body, the bread, and the cup. And because Christ is with us, what that makes the Holy Communion table is actually a table where Christ is sitting, where Christ has invited us almost to like pull up a chair like you would at Thanksgiving with all of your family, whether you like them fully or not, whether you agree with them or not, you are invited to pull up and have a seat at the table because it's Christ's table where we have been invited. And because Christ is very real and present with us, that leads us into our next understanding of what the Holy Communion table is. We believe that as we are seated at the table with Christ, as we are coming forward to receive of the bread and receive of the cup, that the very real and present Christ is communicating something to us. 
that if we listen closely, Christ is talking to us. And what's communicated is this thing we call grace. Have you heard that word a lot in the United Methodist Church? And it's because grace is the way that God communicates the utmost love for us. And it's in that moment where through the bread and through the cup, these ordinary means, something extraordinary has the opportunity and is happening where Christ is speaking to us preveniently, you might say. And we have the opportunity to listen. If we listen closely, there's a feeling, a moment that is sacred, that is holy, where God, through Christ, by the power of the Holy Spirit, is present and talking. And if we listen closely, we might have a really amazing experience of the risen Christ. And through that empowering or through that encounter where we are reminded that we are loved that we are forgiven it's in that moment where we are then the third thing we believe empowered to go out into the world where we are one with christ one with each other and one in ministry to all the world We believe that through a bite-sized bit of bread and cup, Christ is communicating to us. And it's in in that moment of communication where we are then empowered. We are filled with something that is simply undescribable. It reminds us who we are. It reminds us that no matter where we are in our lives, that we are uniquely gifted and that we are loved. And that we are very capable human beings of showing that love to others in whatever ways that God has gifted us uniquely. It's almost like when you're at the Thanksgiving table or any table really, when you are eating food that is healthy food, that is good for you food, what that food does is give you life and energy and it enables your body to work in the ways that your body needs to work to be able to sustain all it is that you need to do throughout that day. It's why breakfast is so important. So if we believe that Holy Communion is this meal that we've been invited to, to sit at Christ's table, to listen to what Christ is speaking to us, then what it is that we partake in, the bread and the cup, sustain us for the work that we have been invited into by that very Christ. The work of loving God and loving others in any context that we find ourselves. And so we are fed. We are reminded. We are made new and revived and refreshed to then go out into the world until Christ comes in final victory and we can feast at that heavenly banquet with Christ once again. So if that, if you noticed those three major theological things we believe at the table has absolutely nothing to do with us. There's nothing that we need to come with or offer because Christ is offering that already preveniently. However, if we go back to what it is that Paul says, uh, there's something really important. In the second half of what Paul, the advice that Paul is giving to the Corinthians of this church, that this is a holy and important moment, this meal that we're gathered together. However, This meal has only half its power if you come half ready. Part of what we are invited into when we walk forward to come and meet Christ in front of the table or to pull up a chair is to come expecting to have an experience with the risen Christ, to do the work of opening our hearts and minds 
to this mystery that we believe and to be open enough to be present in the moment with Christ and maybe, just maybe, hear what Christ is saying to you, that you're loved, that you're cherished, and that you have been called. But that message, that conversation, is only received by someone who's listening. And so part of the invitation of Holy Communion, our part in this call and response, if you will, is to be open and ready for what it is that Christ has for us in this moment. Thanks be to God for the gift of weekly communion with Christ, our Lord.